はい、えー、皆さんおはようございます。Well, good morning, everyone. 日本大オーガナイザー協会代表理事の。My name is Mayumi Takahara. I am the representative director of the Japan Life Organizer Association. Thank you very much for participating in our online conference. In this online conference, I will be your conference navigator. I will be emceeing this se these sessions. Thank you. So, getting right into it, I'd like to introduce the simultaneous interpreting system. So, let me start sharing my screen. So, this online conference、uh, is This is similar to the other JALO conferences、uh, that are actually on site. We will be providing simultaneous interpreting in Japanese and English. So, if you go to the bottom of your screen here on Zoom, there is a menu bar and there is an there's interpreting button. So, you can select the language that you want to hear、uh, to enjoy the sessions. Now, the button looks different、uh, if you're on a computer or on a smartphone. So, please care for there. So, this is what a smartphone screen looks like. And so, my chat right here、uh, in my Kansai accent it's already being interpreted into English. And I'm so sorry, you know, this, this tire, my tired Kansai accent is really tough for interpreters,、uh, but please stick with me to the end. So, the first item today is the opening talk. So, I'd like to introduce the topic for today, which is the Japan Today and the Sustainable Society Created by Professional Organizers.、Uh, this will be my topic.、Uh, so, this is our 12th JALO conference, and it's the first time we conduct it online. But originally, Uh, we were supposed to actually host this in Hiroshima. So, the picture in the middle here that's the A bomb dome. And within the same peace park where that is, there is the International Conference Center Hiroshima. And then nearby, there is the Anacrum Plaza Hotel. Those were meant to be our venues. And this is actually pictures from yesterday.、Uh, Yoko Akiyama, one of the organizers in Hiroshima, took these photos for us. Um, near the、uh, venue there every year, they have something called a Dreamination event, which is an illumination event. And we were supposed to actually go and see this together. So, these members here and other members of the Western Chugoku chapter,、uh, we were really looking forward to seeing each other in Hiroshima.、Uh, by the way, this、uh, again is. From last year, 2019, it was held in Tokyo. And so it's our group photo from that event. So nothing like the three C's for COVID this year, where we avoid closed, crowded, or close contact spaces. Nothing like that, is it? And we're, oh, yeah, we were doing things, something like this as well. So this is from our party.、Um, every year, we look back to the previous year's conference and then. We prepare to, you know, for the current year's、uh, conference.、Uh, but, you know, looking at last year's images, you know, I don't get so sentimental usually, but looking at these pictures, I got some tears、uh, in my eyes.、Um, not from this picture specifically, but many others. Oh, wait, my other photos won't come up.、Um, hmm, this picture. Yeah, see this one. So, this, you know, it's like someone's cutting. Cutting onions, and that's why I couldn't actually get this photo up very quickly.、Um, but this is our second party after the main party last、uh, year, and when we finished that. So the Kanto chapter really made the event a lot of fun, and the second, the after party also was amazing. And it was this, you know, the Kanto chapter staff members here,、uh, as well as all the people that really helped us, you know, with the cleanup and everything, including for the after party. It was really so much fun. And we're so looking forward to, you know, we were a bit drunk, but we we're just saying, okay,、uh, let's see each other next, again next year. And we put those little heart, heart symbols up and we're all connected. And 
you know, at the time, we never expected that this year would be what it is. Now, have you heard this acronym, VUCA? Um, apparently, it started in the late 90s as an American military term. Uh, but in recent years, it's used a lot in business as well. Uh, so you can see it in web, web media and newspapers as well. So basically, it says that we ha we're under such unclear circumstances, it's difficult to predict the future. Uh, but since before this uh, COVID times, I think that people, this phrase VUCA has been quite popular. And people are saying, this is the time of VUCA. There are so many um, unexpected things happening. And it's not just that, but things are just very uh, complicated and very vague as well. It's, you know, I kind of went into a bit of a tough, uh, difficult topic here, but I want to actually ask you question at this stage, or uh, I'd like to take a survey, actually. There's a little questionnaire function here. We have a lot of people from overseas as well. So these are Japanese services. Um, so maybe you haven't heard of some of these, uh, but uh, Amazon, Uber Eats, PayPay, Kurashiru, and TikTok. These five different services, have you used these? before or not. So that's the question in the survey here. Uh, you're going to see the vote function come up. So what we'd like you to do is, so there's gonna be a little questionnaire survey. Uh, and so please vote on your answer. Those of you on a smartphone, you'll probably see that your screen suddenly switches over to the survey screen. Don't worry about it. Just click on the your answer. Okay, so let's start that. Okay, so on your screen, you should see a voting function. So if you've heard, used any of these services, please click on those. If you haven't used any of them, there's a, a choice there at the very bottom there. But I think if you're Japanese, uh, you probably should know at least uh, the existence of these. Anyway, so please uh, let us know. Okay, we're getting all these results on my screen. Okay. Yeah, most people have uh, responded. Thank you. Uh, there's a few more people maybe that haven't um, participated yet, but I would like to close the voting pretty soon. Okay. Uh, okay, there are about 10 people, 10 people who haven't answered, but we're going to close this now. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to share the results with you. Okay. On your screen, you should be able to see the results. Amazon, they're strong, aren't they? As expected. But PayPay too, 60%. They're at a cashless uh, service. And Uber Eats, 17%. Okay. Kurashiru is a recipe uh, video site. And that's 25%. That's pretty big. So TikTok, 17%. But still quite significant, I think. TikTok, I think, is uh, it's more a younger person's service. So um, for my generation, I think there's a lot of people who haven't used it yet. Well, thank you for your participation. I'm going to close this window. Thank you very much for participating. By the way, Amazon, I think most people have used this. Uh, you sh did you know this? Um, Amazon started its services in Japan in 2000. So it's 20 years ago now. And so I went and looked back at when I first used Amazon. I looked at my history and it's, uh, so there's proper history kept there for all of our, my purchases. Uh, but my first purchase was made on January 4th in 2002. That's the first time I used it. Um, the previous year in November, I had just given birth. So it's probably really tough for me to um, leave the home. And so that's probably, I was probably really scared and I made a purchase of a book. Well, it's a comic book that I bought first. And with Amazon coming out, you know, uh, all the neighborhood bookstores that were prevalent 
everywhere 20 years ago, most of them probably disappeared, right? They've all probably gone out of business. Uh, in this last 20 years, it's really only the large terminal stations uh, that still have bookstores. And it's not just books. Um, all kinds of things can be purchased from Amazon now, Amazon or other e-commerce sites. And it's become one of those givens. Movies, uh, music, you can enjoy uh, the both from these services as well. And when we think about our own lives, you know, when we cook, we use uh, video or recipe video sites like Kurashiru. We might use those to make something. If we don't have time to cook, then we might use Uber Eats, you know, use a smartphone app to order our food. Um, and even if you go to a real store, like our brick and mortar store, you don't use cash. You use your smartphone to pay using things like PayPay. And then you have spare time, you use social media, for example, like TikTok. Compared to a few years ago, our lives have really been greatly changed by the development of technology. But what I'd like you to really pay attention to here is that, well, okay, Amazon's been around for 20 years, but, um, you know, Kurashiru, 25% of you use Kurashiru, Uber Eats, 17%, PayPay, you know, 60% of you use PayPay or have used it. Uber Eats started service in Japan in 2016. And then Kurashiru, also that's 2016. TikTok was, uh, gave birth in China in 2016, and international version is 2017. So that's when we started being able to use it. For PayPay, it only started in 2018, only two years ago. So what I'm saying is compared to before, our values and our actions, our behaviors, um, and you know things that change the whole structure of society have really come out in very short term and get accepted very very quickly. And this is the V of VUCA, volatility. And it's not just development of technology, uh, but also things like disasters caused by climate change, or even uh, what we have here with, uh, with our current situation of COVID also is included in this volatility. When the speed of change is too fast, then the givens or the common sense of yesterday suddenly become, doesn't is not so today. And I think uh, one that's really, uh, that you'll notice is really true is what you're looking at is the, tip, the picture there is the masks. Uh, this June, we had, uh, we supervised a showroom for a storage uh, materials manufacturer called Nankai Plywood. And we gathered and we took a group photo. Uh, before, you know, you would never see everybody taking a photo with masks when no one is sick or no one has uh, allergies or anything like that. But now, you know, it's, you are wrong. It's, uh, it's common sense to wear a mask now. Now you can't tell who is who. Uh, I am the third person from the left. Um, and I have a massive smile, but you can't see it. So the fact is, it's not just the common sense and it changes in, in that, but there's no real like there's no real certainty to say this is the correct answer if i do this this is going to go right there's a lot of vagueness in our in our world right now so it's not like before you go to a good university you go to an excellent company you get married and then when you have a child you get a mortgage and you buy a home in uh in the suburbs and then your children grow and then you hit uh, retirement then you get your retirement money or your pension, you return, you pay off your mortgage, and then, you know, the couple, you just go, have your own time to go travel. Even if you dream of that life now, with the seniority system and the Japanese style of working, which is a life, the, the lifelong uh, employment, that's no longer existing. And so it's actually become very difficult to do this. And also, same as this conference, but with globalization uh, progressing, you know, we're handling more languages uh, and we're working with more countries. So we have time difference uh, adjustments to make, and that's pretty complicated too. So for this conference as well, when we were trying to schedule the rehearsal, it was so difficult to really put our schedule together for the rehearsal. 
So even if you're not familiar with the term VUCA, our current world that we live in is really a change. There's a lot of uncertainties. It's complicated. It's vague. There's a lot of ambiguity. I think you can really feel, you already feel VUCA. VUCA. Now, in this VUCA times, how do we survive? How do we live? As life organizers, how do we work? How should we be? So as JALO, there's a key word that we really want, that we really value. And this is the topic for our sessions today and tomorrow, to evolve. You know, it's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex and ambiguity and ambiguous. So we don't need just small changes. We need to evolve. As humans, um, we have evolved and continue to evolve as the our surrounding situations have changed. Those that don't evolve uh, have gone extinct. They're no longer with us. So how are we able to actually evolve? Something that greatly ch changed. Uh, there are two things that affect the difference between monkeys and humans. One is this major change in our environment. And the second is to, is to walk on two feet. Uh, things like um, we had we had many uh, mountain ranges that are built through the uplift of land and from volcanoes erupting, and then the African uh, continent was split from us. There was crust movement, and so we so things like forests, which were um, for us paradise with a lot of food and very few enemies, uh, they disappeared from us, and that's the really first big change. Now, there are many theories here, uh, but the forest where we were living on the, the tree, in the trees, uh, very comfortably, you know, those disappeared. And so we had to move and we found, well, it would be a lot easier to stand straight and walk on two feet. It's just, just more convenient for that. So to stand straight, to walk on two feet, that is the first trigger of what split us away from monkeys. And before that, our, you know, our front feet were used to walk, not necessarily to walk, but sorry, they were used to walk, but uh, they suddenly become became easier to use as hands, not to hang off the trees and such, uh, or not to walk on, but to grab things and hold and such. And that's part of our evolution. So by standing straight, uh, we our, the structure of our throat changed, so we were suddenly able, to, we were gradually able to start speaking words, and then ultimately uh, humans got their large brains as well. So listen to what I just said. You know, it's not like we made we made a huge efforts to make this progress. It's that we kind of just had to deal with it because our environments changed. It's more of a result, isn't it? It's not because of our efforts, but we just ended up uh, evolving because we had to. This is my interpretation, but evolution is not a result of our massive efforts, but it's more like, oh, why is the world like this now? Uh, I was happy where I was, but now there's COVID. Uh, you know, it's these changes around us. And so we have to change. Okay, so let's try something different. So we started doing the little things that we felt we could do. You know, these little changes, these little activities were what, change, were what, um, what event ultimately caused evolution. The picture here, sorry, it's totally offline here. Um, I, I'm digressing here, but this is something that I think only Japanese will understand. This is the Japanese version of the Flintstones, this TV show. And I love this show. It's called Hajime Ningen Gyatoruzu, but uh, so we have mammoths in here. So it's a stone age. Um, and the main character here is Gong. He's a Chromanian. So you can see here, that's where he is about there. So he's, you know, he's progressed quite a bit. And on the right hand side of him is, uh, is Dotechin. He's still an ape man. He's before that. So Gong and Dotechin, what's the difference between these two? My answer to this is that what made a difference to them, the simplest way to look at it is the way they think and their behavior 
um, to be able to think that their behavior is a given and to think, to be able to say, huh, maybe I can do that. It's the idea that, okay, I think I can do that. I think I can try that. That is everything. So what does that mean? The word given, it's a, so a given in Japanese is often seen as the opposite of the word thank you. And the reason for this is that the word thank you uh, in Japanese, when you write it in Chinese, Japanese characters, is to say it's difficult to have or it's not a given. So the opposite of that, the antonym would be a given. So to say, you know, don't think it's a given, you have to be thankful. Um, so, you know, it kind of takes the word given uh, very lightly, but um, but I do actually really like the word given in Japanese. It's called atarimae. Now, I'm going to go back to human evolution here. So first, we stand up straight and then we start walking on two feet. I think the first person to do that is really amazing. Oh, the person, or I guess it's, it's called a Australopithecus. But that, it's not like you have all these amazing Australopithecus that are doing these things. I think, I think you have others in the background saying, oh, look at him. Oh, there's someone else standing on two feet. Oh, hey, well, that looks kind of cool. Maybe I'll try it. And so you had those that decided to try it. There are probably a lot like this who saw it and then wanted to copy it. But at the same time, there were probably others who say, no, no, four feet, more stable. And, you know, two feet, it's just a trend. We're not going to bother with it. There's definitely would have been those that said that. But then when everybody else around them, you know, everyone who was walking on four feet started living on their two feet and everyone else is doing it, suddenly it's like, huh, oh, everyone's doing this. Huh, it's a given now. Well, then maybe I should do it as well. And then... Suddenly, this uh, this amazing progress, this amazing evolution here, uh, the standing on two feet and walking on two feet, it's like it just happened. It was like a, it happened little by little, s small bits. So you know, person, I'm this is my personal view too. But there are people like this in the past as well. There were those that started talking, uh, walking on their two feet, and there were those who were saying, "Oh, look at him! Look at him on his two feet. He just wants to stand out." You know, there's those. Um, those Australopithecus as well. And those ones probably went towards extinction. Well, I mean, I'm not so sure, but they're the ones probably that went though. Now, which community do you belong to? That probably really affected your destiny. Um, it's something I've experienced as well. But for example, starting your own business or publishing uh, is the same thing. If you don't have anyone like that, uh, anyone like that who does that around you, then, you know, anybody who has their own company, it's like, oh my gosh, it's they're amazing. They're someone from a different world. But once you join the community and you have a lot more people around you have their own business such, it's not special in any way. It's something maybe I can do as well. Oh, okay. And then so suddenly it's like, oh wait, I've already done it. It just happens. And what's important is this feeling. It's this sense, you know, I think a very, it's a very Japanese way of thinking to say, oh, well, everyone else is doing it. And a lot of people see it as a kind of a negative thing. But when you think of evolution, to belong to a good quality community, to, it's a really easiest way to evolve, isn't it? Uh, to You just happen to evolve because you're, you've just followed everyone else. So, Jalo, we want to be a positive community where it helps everybody evolve uh, easily. But one thing I want to add here. Uh, so here's another picture of evolution. Um, we are actually now paying the price of past evolution at the world level. We need to be conscious of, uh, of a sustainable society. And we need to change the way we live and the way we work for that as well. And so another, uh, you know, uh, another acronym here, SDGs very popular phrase here, and we hear it a lot. 
Um, now for us as life organizers to work, we need to actually keep these perspectives of the sustainable development goals, SDGs. It sounds a bit difficult when we think of sustainable development, uh, but it's really to think about our children's generations and to make sure we have a world where the next generation can live in happiness and smiles, do what we can for it. And so in uh, life organizers that are members of Jello, there are, I think, many that are very conscious of SDGs in their work. And so we would like to have those, uh, those life organizers also present in these two days. I know our work as life organizers, really, this perspective of SDGs is really important. And for us to evolve, we need to continue to learn. Agile itself, we want to be an organization that continues to evolve, uh, but we want to also have a sustain, be a sustainable community where we're all comfortable and with through our various loose, easy connections. I hope that our conference here uh, can connect to your to your evolution. Oh, and there's here's some evolution here as well. So in 2015, we actually created a new a stamp rally that started uh, in 2015 for our to create connections. And so we have our own online stamp rally here. Uh, it's this evolution. Amazing. We can do this online. So Japanese people, we're very shy. It's very difficult for us to meet uh, people that we don't know. And so for people like that, we get we have to go and meet various people and get stamps uh, filled in. So it's a very a great tool that's really suitable for Japanese uh, personalities to meet other people. So this is created by these two who live in Hiroshima. We have um, Aki Idemoto from the Nishi, uh, from the West uh, Chugoku Association, and the person who actually thought this up, Kie Ueki. It's really a wonderful way where they really go. They their life organizer spirit, uh, which really takes a, takes the, the whole VUCA uh, time here, which is uh, d play, play hard, work hard. There is only a Japanese version here, but I hope you do enjoy it.